So what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna set up my spray tent back here. Um, nothing special as far as that goes. I do have access to a professional spray booth that I'll use for the final coat on the Roller Games play field. But other than that, what I'm gonna do is get my Twilight Zone cabinet finished, hopefully spray it for the last time today as well. So that would be nice. So here's what we have after sanding it. Um, you can really tell, I mean, obviously do a good job before you even paint it in the first place of, you know, the primer coating is, is pretty much everything, but the sanding in between layers is a really good idea too, because here now I have a chalkboard like finish and hopefully when I get done spraying this thing, the whole reason I'm re-spraying this thing in the first place is because I want that perfect finish. Now what I use to wipe off the dust here is uh, this stuff. It's like two or three bucks at, um, at uh, Lowe's or Home Depot or Walmart or wherever you shop for your glass cleaner. <laughs> Anyway, this stuff seems to work pretty well. Uh, it's ammonia free, so, you know, I actually use this stuff for uh, Invisiglass and PDI glass and so on for pinballs as well. So, anyway, supposedly it's safe. If I'm wrong about that, I'm sorry in advance, but I've never had a problem with it. So, I'm going to go ahead and just wipe this down and uh, get this thing prepped and ready to throw in the tent. I mostly have everything to go ready to go now in my, uh, you know, this is... It's not a huge setup right now, but I'm not really doing that important to work in here. And again, I do have access to a professional spray booth. I typically don't do the cabinets on this. Now, one of the things is I did not uh, cover up the sides here, and the, I'm not planning on redoing the sides because before I put the decals on there, I sand it off and I get a perfect smooth finish like this to put the decals on top of. So I don't really care about overspray on the sides. Um, I did tape off the rails here because these are the hardest part. For some reason recently, I've just been striking out. So I like what I got on them uh, currently and it's pretty easy to blend. This is the exact same paint. So um, this is really the only part that I'm gonna be doing here. I have the have it up on sawhorses. It's gonna be a little tight in there having it up so high, but that'll allow me to get the very bottom as well, which sometimes is a problem. I've got just basically got two fans spraying away from all my neighbors <laughs> in the backyard. Um, I'm sure that they appreciate that. And uh, that's what we got. So I'm going to go ahead and explain everything before I put my respirator on. Um, just because uh, you're not going to be able to hear me at all when I have that thing on. Um, again, I'm not a professional at this. I am an amateur. So uh, take everything I say with a grain of salt. What I'm doing here is I'm getting my lacquer thinner ready. You're going to need the lacquer thinner to uh, clean up. The biggest thing that intimidated me when I first started doing this um, was cleanup. And cleanup is actually easy as long as you... Uh, approach it the right way. So you're going to need some lacquer thinner. It's good to have it in a little ketchup or mustard bottle like this. Uh, you're going to need a tack cloth. This is good to wipe everything, gently wipe everything down, get all any remaining dust so it doesn't end up in your, uh, in your coat. Uh, you're going to need one of these. This is a automotive uh, paint measuring mixing cup. Um, basically what we're going to do, this is what we're using is um, UTEC 500. And it's three to one ratio. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna look on the side of the cup. It says three to one to one. Uh, the only two you need to worry about are the first two. So we've got, uh, for this particular one, we're going to be going up to one because we don't need that much paint. So we're gonna do the, the, the actual paint, we're gonna go up to this one. And then the paint hardener, you're gonna go up to this one right here. So that's what we're gonna be doing as far as that goes. If you forget the hardener, you're pretty much screwed. Don't forget the hardener. So right now, here's some UTEC U500 uh, hardener. Uh, and this is pretty much what I use because the guy that uh, taught me and the guy that, um, you know, that uh, my, my buddy, um, you know, is, it, it, that's, that's what he uses. Another thing you're gonna need uh, in colder weather at least is accelerant. Um, this just cuts the uh, drying time between coats down drastically. You're gonna want it to be about 50 degrees or higher, 50 degrees at the bare minimum. So we're real close to that. So what I'm gonna do is after I spray this, I'm gonna haul it back into the garage because the garage is much hotter in here than it is outside. So uh, the other thing you're gonna need, I guess, I'll go ahead and bring this over here. You're gonna need one of these paper filters. Uh, when you mix everything up, you're gonna go ahead and dump it in here, uh, and uh, that's gonna take out any remaining you know, particles of anything. You want your paint to be as, as clean as possible, obviously. So, um, also, it never hurts to have these little eyedropper things. I think I bought a pack of 100 of them for a few bucks on Amazon. These are great, especially for the accelerant. The ratio for the accelerant is one gram per, uh, 
one gram per ounce basically. So I just, I put about two drops, two drops of this I found is about a gram. Okay, so I put about two drops in there each time. Now, if I'm doing three to one on this cup right here, I'm looking over here, my, I'm gonna end up about, at about four ounces. So I'm gonna put uh, eight drops of the accelerator in there. Um, that should that should do me. When it's a little bit hotter out, I put less accelerant or no accelerant in. So that's just me. Um, things that you're gonna wanna wear, this is the basic bare minimum. I've got what's, this is referred to as a moon suit on Amazon. It's about 30 bucks, I think. I've got several of them. This one you can tell has been used quite a bit. I've got some gloves on and I've got my respirator. You wanna protect yourself, this stuff is highly toxic. I think this is the bare, very bare minimum that you can do. Since this isn't like a big part of what I do, um, I feel pretty secure in, in those things. So there we go. So as I'm in between coats here, I'm gonna go ahead and make a couple more notes. There's the first coat. As you can see, I'm pretty happy with that. Nice and even, no uh, no craziness. I am gonna go ahead and put a second coat on there in about 15 minutes uh, or whenever, basically whenever the paint is tacky. Um, you notice this, this uh, line that I put down here. That's basically to make sure, uh, just, just to keep myself honest, about eight inches away from the cabinet. That's about where you want. So that gives me a reference point so I don't get too close or I'm a little uneven. Sometimes I struggle with that a little bit. Um, also, I, I'm i just using, as far as my gun goes, I just use the Harbor Freight, you know, cheapo, cheapo one. Because then if I screw something up and uh, it's, you know, unusable, I just throw it in the trash and get another one. But I, those things I think max is 40 PSI. I put it at about 36. And that seems to work really well for me. Here's what we have after two coats. Um, I'm pretty happy with it. You, uh, it's pretty even from what I can tell here. Um, I just hauled it into my garage immediately, as you could see from the video, and stood it upright like this because it is going to take a little bit. It's about 50 degrees out, so it's going to take a little longer to dry. And it kind of pools together for a nice smooth finish. Um, so I'm going to leave that in my garage to dry here, and we'll take a look at it in a couple days. So here's what we ended up with, with the back of the Twilight Zone. Um, it's it's about what I want. I mean, it's it's pretty much dead on as far as what I want. Now again, I taped those rails uh, because I felt the rails were good. It's really easy to get dripping in that if you put a little too much on there. It's really kind of challenging for me at least, because again, I'm not a professional at this, but um, I kind of do what I gotta do. But uh, anyway, I'm very happy with the finish on this. I'm very particular about it. If I detect any orange peeling or anything like that, specifically because this is mine, uh, it's gonna drive me crazy for the duration of the entire uh, time owning the machine, even though it's not even visible. So 
now you're going to see a lot more about this uh, project. I've got the play field is already done. I'm about ready to start populating that. And uh, this guy, a couple more, you know, step by step, I'm, I'm going to get this cabinet done.